comfortable for this question. Whoever has to edit this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carly Whelan and we're about to do an interview. So enjoy all these questions that Boss has posed for me and let's just dive right into all these questions. They told us we have a 15 second limit. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to stick to that. I love talking and right now I'm pretty sure I'm already over 15 seconds of introducing this. So <laughs> without further ado, let's, let's answer some questions. Hi, my name is Carly Whelan and I'm with Boss Models. tips for modeling okay so i traveled to tokyo japan um and i was there for july and august um it was an amazing experience but there are some things that i regret not taking and regret taking um the first thing is i packed so many shoes um and i only wore like two pairs and that was like my tackies because i walked everywhere um, so getting a comfortable pair of shoes to walk around everywhere um, is good because public transport is really good all, all over. So most likely you're going to be walking to castings and walking to your jobs. Um, so get a comfortable pair of shoes and then your pair of heels that you use for castings. Um, I packed so many shoes and it was just not worth it. Um, that, that would be the biggest thing. Like I packed so many extra outfits and shoes and everything thinking, oh, I might need this. Um, instead of sticking to my basics, the things that I know work for castings and the things that I know I feel comfortable in. So I could have limited down the stuff that I packed so much and I would have been able to bring so much more stuff home. Um, so yeah, really stick to the clothes that you know and love for castings because those are the things you're going to feel the best in and feel more confident in, especially in a strange country. Um, the other tip that I would say is don't be intimidated by the other models. There's models from all over the world at these castings and some of them don't even speak the same language as you. And they all have this unique style and this funky um, like look to them or they might be like really elegant and classy. Like don't try and compare yourself to them. Wear the things that you feel comfortable in and that you love to wear to castings because ultimately that confidence is going to shine through and the clients are going to see you for you. And want to book you for that. Um, another thing about Japan and Tokyo is there are thrift shops all over the place. There are vending machine, cof coffee vending machines. Like there's so many cool things. Um, don't just take your time. Like I know you're busy with shoots and castings and stuff like that. But there are days that you are off. Use that time to explore the culture. Explore the city. Don't just sit home and miss the entire experience. Really go out there and make the best of every single moment. I actually vlogged my entire trip in Japan from my costing outfits to, um, you know, seeing the sights and behind the scenes of my jobs. And it was so much fun. I'm looking back at them now and seeing the outfits that worked and that I felt the best in and that I wore constantly and realizing how much stuff I took and that wasn't really necessary. On set tips for being professional. Okay, so I think the biggest thing about being professional is being polite. Um, there might be some things that you're not comfortable doing or not happy with at the shoot. And that's okay. Um, it's just being polite about it and handling things in the right way. Um, another way to be professional is to be early, not on time. I like being early. Just finding the place and stuff like that and finding parking isn't always the easiest thing. So I prefer to be early. I feel that shows um, real professionalism. I know that when I was in Japan, I was early for a shoot and uh, the stylist and everything looked at me. She's like, you're not even the photographers here yet. And I was like, it's fine. I'll just sit in the corner and I'll wait. I prefer to be earlier. And they were like so happy with that. They were like so shocked because they're like, usually the models come so late. 
um, and I couldn't understand that because personally I hate being late for anything um, so being on time and just being polite um, please and thank you don't expect anything um, don't expect free stuff don't expect food on tape don't expect anything just be really polite about every situation even if it's something that you're not agreeing with just bring it up in a nice manner and i'm pretty sure you guys will be able to work out and make an amazing shoot happen i'm not good at this speed round <laughs> speed round questions like how do people answer this in 15 seconds i love talking um okay so flying tips I am a nervous flyer, I get very anxious on flights, so some tips that help me is being extremely prepared. I have an on-flight um, bag with like my laptop and a book and something like calming and relaxing, as well as in there I have some face products. I actually love treating myself on a plane, it's a great time to use a face mask, it's a great time to like catch up on some sleep um it's it's a great time to rejuvenate your skin especially in a plane that's so dry so pack a face mask um under eye mask a lip serum a hair treatment something that you want to use um, but the biggest tip i can give you is just make sure that you look okay when you get off the plane um so go ahead with the face masks and everything like that but just before you land or in the bathroom after you've landed i would touch up a little bit and just make sure you look fresh I would also pack an extra pair of clothes like a casting outfit um for to change in directly as of, as you get off the plane because I got picked up after like a 36 hour flight and then another two hour bus ride I got picked up and I had to go to five castings like till midnight like I landed at like 5 p.m or something and I, I literally went to castings until midnight I only got to see my apartment way later than I wanted to I thought I would have the opportunity to shower and wash my face and like change I did not I was wearing leggings and a jersey it was so awkward after 36 hours of flying to then go to castings so what I would do is just make sure that you treat yourself on the plane like using a nice face mask and really pampering your skin in this very drying environment and then making sure that you have like a fully prepped um, like deodorant and perfume and a little bit of makeup and some dry shampoo or baby powder for your hair and a change of clothes so you can change into that feel fresh and feel good and even if you don't have to go to a casting after at least you'll feel good. <laughs> So something about me that not everyone knows and something that I am passionate about and really want people to know, well not want to know but want the knowledge to be out there, like I don't really know how to explain this. Um, okay, so something about me um, that not most people know is that I have endometriosis. So this is a type of cancerous growth in the uterus that affects the endometric lining hence the very long endometriosis <laughs> title um this is basically just means that that lining grows all over your body where it's not supposed to it's like a cancerous growth and it just keeps growing um and i've had surgery to remove it but there is no cure so it grows back and it changes there's some preventions that you can do but there's really no cure for it um but that's not really what I want to talk about. The fact that I want to talk about is that actually one in every three women have this and they don't know um, because there's this weird stigma about femininity and you can't talk about that and to me it's bizarre because I've been struggling with this since I was 16 years old. I knew something was wrong with my body. I knew there was something wrong and no one would listen to me. I went to so many male doctors and stuff like that that just pushed up to like bad period pains and like suck it up or like and it was very degrading because I started feeling that there was something wrong with me and like I just didn't know what it was all about and I couldn't handle it but that wasn't the fact when I actually figured out that what it was and the fact that most of my family has it and I didn't even know that and that women don't speak about it it made me so angry um, but angry in like a sense that like why can't we why can't we as women come together and support each other and talk about these things and 
set up finances and um, do the research to try and find a cure. It's kind of just been like brushed under the carpet and no one knows about it. Um, and a lot of women don't even know the warning signs. They don't even know that it's a thing until they eventually one day want to have a child and they can't. So endometriosis has become such a taboo subject that people don't talk about. And it really bothers me that women can't speak freely and that we can't talk about these issues and help each other. I've done so much research and there's like, if you dig a lot, you can find it on better eating habits, better sleeping habits, so many things that can help improve the pain. Um, I used to get up on some days and not be able to move. Like I would literally get out of bed and be like, I can't move. That's how bad it was. And the fact that I was dismissed so many times just now grates my cheese a little bit because there are so many women out there suffering and I want to use my platform and my experience and my knowledge on the subject because I personally have it on how to just live your life in a better way and also finding a doctor that will listen to you and finding treatments that work best for you. Um, I hate the fact that women have taboo subjects and that those things we aren't allowed to talk about. It is so important to take care of your body um, physically, mentally, spiritually, we have to take care of ourselves and women have to stick together. Um, another thing that gets me is, is, is that we feel like we can't even talk to each other about it. Like women to women, we can't even talk about it um, because there's a stigma of um, being downgraded and things like that. And as women, we should stick together. And it's something that is really important to me um, is to educate women out there, educate teenagers out there to know their bodies and know when something is wrong and also seek help and speak up and for us to all be there for each other and support each other the same as with mental illnesses and anxiety and depression. It's a real thing out there and a lot of people are suffering from it. Hi guys, I just wanted to thank you guys so so much for watching. I realized last night when I was editing that I didn't close um, the video properly. I didn't really say goodbye. Um, so I am on my way to work now and I just wanted to say thank you guys so so much for watching and it really does mean a lot to me especially sharing my story and my endometriosis journey if you guys have any questions please let me know down below in the comments or tweet me everything will be in the description box and i'm really sorry for all the dogs and stuff like that it is before the time slot where we are still allowed to walk so yeah have a great day and i'll see you guys later